Hallelujah. Praise God our dear viewer. This morning once again, before you is Pastor Danish, before we begin, let's pray. We bless you, Lord of Heaven and King of Kings, this morning once again. As we begin this program, we invite the presence that Lord take control and speak with us, speak with us in our complications till something happens because we believe in thy divine power in Jesus' name. Amen. My subtopic this morning, is it complicated? Is it complicated? My key texts come from the book of Daniel, chapter 3, and I will read verse 2, verse 5, verse 7, and I will paraphrase this particular text. But before I read this text, allow me to begin with some factual ideas. I want to bring to your attention that the book of Daniel is uh, known to have been written by none other than Daniel, who was a captive and a called prophet by God. This particular man is being postulated that he wrote this book around uh, 530 BC. And this man, when he sat to write, I want to bring to attention that when you begin the book of Daniel chapter 1, brings to attention that this Daniel together with his fellow friends were among those who were taken captive. Actually, when you read Daniel chapter 1 verse 1 says that in the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon came to Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord delivered Jehoiakim king of Judah into his hands along with some of the articles from the temple of God, this he carried off to the temple of his God in Babylon and put in the treasure house of Babylon. As you continue reading verse 3, then the king orders Ashpenaz, chief of his court officials, to bring in some of the Israelites from the royal family and the nobility, young men without physical defect, handsome, showing aptitude for every kind of learning, well-informed, quick to understanding, and qualified to serve in the king's palace. Now, this introductory text in the book of Daniel chapter 1, as you keep reading up to verse 4 and 5, brings to attention that there was a scenario whereby the Israelites, the children of God, that is the, the kingdom of Judah, after they had failed to hearken to the voice of God, God allowed them to be taken captives in Babylon. And when they were taken captives in Babylon, the Bible tells us that there are those who found themselves among this particular group that were taken captives. And here we find these young people, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Daniel being one of them. These are young men who were known to be of great understanding, known to be coming from royal families. These were young people without any physical defect. They were handsome and they were people who showed aptitude for learning. These were people who were picked and also carried captive in Babylon. And when they were carried captives in Babylon, I want to bring to your attention that there they served as people who were slaves. They served as people who had been caught. And as you go deep down the Bible, now, the book of Daniel chapter 3 brings to us a scenario whereby these people being in Babylon, the king Nebuchadnezzar dreamt a dream. And therefore, he wanted somebody who would be able to interpret the dream and tell him what the dream was all about and what the dream was. And in the whole kingdom, we realize the Bible tells us, I'm paraphrasing, that there was none who was able except the God who would not live amongst man. And here, when the king's command was that if they can't find somebody to interpret among those who are wise in the kingdom, those who always were known for various things in the kingdom, when they failed, the command was them they, that they were to be killed. And in the event, the king's command was so serious that even Daniel, who was also among the wise of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, were also to be hanged. And listen to me. When you go to chapter 3, the Bible begins a scenario whereby the king had gotten the dream, been 
told the dream in chapter 2 by Daniel and after being told about the dream and the image and how it was, the king decides to make a replica of the image but in his replica the image is made of pure gold and put in the field of Dura and there everyone is commanded to worship a grieven image. And in chapter 3, the Bible tells us of a complication that the, this particular children of God finds themselves in. Here was the ultimatum that when they hear the sounds and the voices and everything, they were to bend down and worship a grieven image. I want to bring to your attention that when you read uh, the book of Daniel chapter 3 verse 2, the Bible says, He then summoned the satraps, prefects, governors, advisors, treasurers, judges, magistrates, and all the other provincial officials to, came to come to the dedication of the image he had set up. So the satraps, the prefects, the governors, the advisors, the treasurers, the judges, and all the provincial officials came so that they would be able to stand and uh, Worship the grieven image that the king had made. And what was the message about? In verse 5, the Bible says, As soon as you hear the sound of the horn, the flute, the zither, lyre, harp, pipes, and all kinds of music, you must fall down and worship the grieven image. Now listen to me. This particular grieven image was made of gold. And there's something that makes me joyous in this particular text. That as that command was given, when you go down, deep down, as you continue running down, you realize that in verse 12, now there is a problem. In verse 12, but there are some Jews whom you have set up over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who pay no attention to you, O king. They neither serve your gods nor worship the image of gold you have set up. Now listen to me, here is a complication that comes up. And where does the complication revolve? The complication revolves around worship. Who is to be worshipped? Now the question, my dear viewer, uh, this morning is that, have you ever been confronted by a situation where you have to choose between two? And here were two options for this particular young people to choose. Either to worship the grieven image and live, or worship the God of heaven and face the wrath of the king. And here we all understand that the king's command was that whoever does not bow and worship that graven image, he was to be thrown into the fiery uh, furnace. I want to bring to your attention, my dear brother, that here is a scenario. Here is a complication. And the children of God, these particular people who had been taught by their parents, these particular young people who had been taught in the schools of their forefathers, these particular people who had had an experience about the God of heaven, these particular people who had the history of how God brought their forefathers from the land of slavery in Egypt, these particular young people were faced with a challenge. These young people who knew the commandments of God. Now these young people, a time comes when they are faced to make a decision on whom to work worship and this want to bring to your attention that there were people who had known that do not worship any other God except to me do not make any grieven image they knew that very well and therefore when they were confronted with this they had to make a choice and listen to me very carefully when they were faced with a complication like this in life where and to whom did they choose to turn to and this is my burden this morning to make it clear that in fact when we are faced with uh, this particular complication and we ought to make a choice, the question is which choice would you make? Would you make a choice to hang with the Lord of heaven, the creator and the king of kings or do you make a choice to bow down to a grieven image? That is the question. But listen to me. There is good news here that these young people, when they had to make a choice between the God of heaven and the graven image, they chose to stand for the God of heaven because they understood that from the past history, the God of heaven is more than able and he was in a position to save them if he ought to because they had known 
that if they were to live, they will live because God commands. But even if they were to die, I think these people already they had a panoramic view that even if unto death, they knew that still they will find that opportune time, that wonderful morning, they will be able to resurrect and meet their Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. What amazes me as I go through this book of Daniel chapter 3, verses 17, these young people are confronted with a choice. They have to worship the graven image, and if they don't, they will have to die. And if you read verses uh, uh, 15, of course, of Daniel chapter 3, the Bible says, Now when you hear the sound of the horn, the flute, zither, lyra, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music, you are ready to fall down and worship the image I made very good. But if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. Then what God will be able to reduce you, to rescue you from my hand? Now listen to what the king says. The king tells these people that you, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, if you hear the voice of this particular music called instruments, you are to bow down and worship a grieving image. What a complication actually. And if you want, now the king says, what a God will save you from the hands or rescue you from the hands of the king. I wonder how at times man can take power into his hand and understands that he can instead of giving uh, that particular aspect to God. And when you read verse 16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to save us from it. And he will rescue us from your hand, O king. But even if, in verse 18, but even if he does not we want you to know, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the, grim, the, 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 the image of gold you have set up. Now listen to me. He is a king. <laughs> and I want to believe that there is a way people used to handle kings. Kings who are respected people. Uh, kings who are people who, you know, were respected. And anybody who approached the king, you had to, you know, go down on your knees, kneel when you approach the king. But listen to me. Here they find the courage and the boldness to stand before the king. And I believe that their hands were maybe behind. They say that king or oh king, listen to us. That even if our God whom we serve will not be able to save us, we know he can save. But if he will not be able to save us, still we cannot bow down <laughs> to this grieving image. And then the Bible proceeds that the king got furious. And when he got furious, the next action was that the fire was to be made hotter seven times. And I like when the king mentioned the word seven. Because this word goes with the power. This word seven goes with completeness. This word seven goes with saving acts. This word seven goes with the divine attention. I want to bring to your attention that when you continue reading the Bible, the king commanded that these people be thrown into the fire. And indeed, they were thrown as per the word of the king. And when you read the Bible in verses 24, as I'm almost coming to a culmination, I want to bring the Nebuchadnezzar after throwing these people into the fiery furnace. Now these people were tied and thrown. And the Bible says that those who threw them in, they were burnt and they died. But this man, these men were thrown into the fire. But there's a writer, I like, uh, you know, when a, there's a writer, when this writer commands in this particular uh, chapter and verses, he says that while the king was, you know, preparing his, his men to throw these people into the fire, there was a meeting in heaven. An emergency meeting was put in place in heaven. And what a wonderful, uh, what a wonderful thing when heaven puts an emergency meeting because there is a complication that they ought to attend to. That somebody somewhere who does not acknowledge the Lord of heaven may understand that there is God in heaven who can come in in whatever situation. I want to bring to your attention that in that meeting the question was who can reach down and save this gentleman and make the old kingdom of Babylon in 
including King Nebuchadnezzar, know that there's God in heaven. And I like the way my Bible puts it that after they were thrown in, the meeting in heaven, you know, when they began, there were those angels who said that I can be there. And as they were giving postulations and suggestions, uh, I want to bring to your attention that uh, the time frame was not enough for them to fly from there to save these particular people from the fiery furnace. And this writer says that the one who volunteered and said that I will be there right on time to remove and save these people from the complication. And this was none other than the Son of God. And in fact, the king himself, when he looked straight into the fire where the Three gentlemen were thrown. Verses 24 of Daniel 3 says that, Then King Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement and asked his advisors, Weren't there three men that we tied up and threw into the fire? They replied, Certainly, O king. And verses 28, he said, Look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed, and the fourth looks like a son of the gods. This is a wonderful and powerful text. Now Jesus makes himself known to the king. He comes right on time. This who is the savior. The savior who even before the foundations of the, uh, the earth were put in place. He had died. And he had made sure that in case of anything. He will still come and save his people. This Jesus appears. And the king Nebuchadnezzar sees him as the son. One of the sons of the gods. And I want to bring to your attention. It was not the gods as he thought. But it was the son of God who is Jesus Christ himself. And verses 20, verses 26, I want to bring to your attention that Nebuchadnezzar walked majestically slowly with amazement closer to the fire. And this is what he said. Then Nebuchadnezzar approached to the, op the opening of the blazing furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out here. These are wonderful words that amazes me this morning. And I want to share with you, my brother and sister, that these young people faced a complication. I do not know the complication you are facing in your life. I do not know what it is that is a complication in your life. The devil might have cornered you somewhere, but listen to me. In the, your complication, heaven is debating. And they would like to bring a solution that would give you joy with your family. That you may know and understand that there is a God in heaven. King Nebuchadnezzar, who had put himself above the God of heaven, now understands that there is a God who saved Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And this God is able to save. And you know, I like how it is. Our God can humble people who rise up above him. My friends, some of the few lessons that I want to bring to your attention as I go through the book of Daniel, I've told you that this book of Daniel, as you go through it, you must be able to understand that it's a prophetic book. But apart from being a prophetic book, this book of Daniel also has uh, the historical part of it. And therefore, as I'm sharing with you, I'm bringing to you a historical part that has got the power of the living God. When we encounter various complications, the question is, who and where can we turn to? And my answer is here with you this morning that we can turn to the God of heaven. I like this particular text because it's give, it gives me joy. And when I go through it, I come to understand some of the lessons that can help me also learn that whatever I do and wherever I am, I must always learn to hearken to the voice of God. And when he says, I must stand there. Now listen to me. Some of the lessons that I learned here is that when man commands what is against God, I want to bring to your attention, when man commands what is against the heavenly God, you as a person choose to stand for what God says. Why am I saying so? When God says something, God has a special backup to those who are faithful to him. Here were young people, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were thrown into a burning, fiery furnace. There the king believed that no one could be able to save him because he was the final command. But I like what the Bible tells me, and I like what the Bible brings to us, that in that particular occasion, God of heaven, whom these people stood, that they will not worship any other God except him, 
home. He came right on time. And when he came right on time, things that were not right, he made right. People who never knew the God of heaven got to know him. The king himself got the message, acknowledge the God of heaven. Why? Because these young people chose to stand for God. Now the question is, wherever you are and in whatever you do, have you chosen to stand for God that he may be able to stand for you? You know, many at times when we are confronted with this issue to choose between God and, and any other option, many people run for other options. Why do you run for other options? Why don't you stand for God? This morning I want to encourage you that please, is it at your workplace, stand for God and on God's side? Is it at your business, stand on the side of God? Is it in your family, stand on the side of God? Is it where? Stand on the side of God. Those who stand on the side of God, I want to add another point. That those who stand on the side of God, these are the people who always find themselves being promoted. And if that is a question that maybe you're doubting, look with me into the Bible. I like it. When you read the book of Daniel chapter 3 verses 30, what does it say? Then king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the provinces of Babylon. Now, have you gotten that, my dear viewer? Now, listen to me. When we learn to walk with God, to talk with God, to embrace his word, to speak with him, to hear from him. Now the truth and the fact is that this God, he will always work a mechanism, work a way out to enhance us to be somewhere where we can still continue standing for him. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to bring to your attention that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stood for God. And as a result of standing for God, what does he say? They were instead promoted. Now, would you like a promotion that comes right from the hand of God? Then keep his commandments. God gives us ten commandments and whoever is faithful to keep those commandments. I want to bring to your attention that God will do you miraculous and marvelous things. Today, when God says that keep and hallow my Sabbath day, there are those who choose not to. Because they have jobs they have to attend on a Sabbath day. They have jobs they have to attend that particular occasion. So they... Think that money is sweeter than God. But this is what I want to bring to your attention this morning. That when you hear God speak to you, when you hear God speak to you about job, I want to bring to your attention that if you choose to hear God speak and keep and hallow his Sabbath, be rest assured that God will reach you at his appointed time. You may seem to maybe lack a job for a moment because of your option and decision. But listen to me. God will always create a way that you may not lack. You will always find a way to be able to scale the heights. Ladies and gentlemen, this morning, it is my encouragement that let us learn to partner with God. Because it's with God, there's sure promotion. Another thing that also I want to bring to your attention is that when we, when we ye learn that we are facing complications, there are some things that we must understand. That God is really longing in that particular complication to be able to use you to reach out to others who do not know him. Now in the whole kingdom of Babylon, listen to me, Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego made it open and clear that there is a God in heaven. And through them standing firm for the God of heaven, we realize that the whole nation of Babylon, the whole kingdom of Babylon got to know of the powerful, powerful God of heaven. And this, I want to bring to your attention, brother, that each made it possible that everybody in the kingdom got to really worship the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And listen to me. The book of Daniel chapter 3 verse 28 says, Then Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and rescued his servants. They trusted in him and defied the king's command. And we and were willing to to give up their lives rather than serve or worship any God except their own God. Therefore, I decree, listen to me, this is now the king decreeing, I decree that the people of any nation or language who say anything against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, listen to me, before they, before they are promoted, this is what they say, before the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be cut into pieces and their houses be turned into piles of rubbles, for no other God can save in this way. Have you known, my brother and sister, that there is a God in heaven 
whom I'm preaching to you this morning. This morning, I want to bring you that this God who is in heaven is the one who can save. Not human being can save. Your job cannot save you. Your boss cannot save you. But the God of heaven, the God of Bible, the God of Abraham, this particular God I'm talking about, the God of Isaac, this particular God I'm, I'm talking about, the God of the Israelites, this God is the one who is able to save us, elevate us, and give us everything that we ever want in this life. What complication are you facing in your life? I want to bring to your attention that God longs to make it right with you. He can do something in your complication. And therefore trust and look unto him. And he will do what is beyond human understanding. At this point, allow me to pray with you. God of heaven, what a complication we face in life. But Lord, we understand through this particular text that in whatever complication, our God is faithful. We may face complication at workplace. We may face complications in our lives. We may face complications in our families. We may face complication in whatever we find ourselves in. But God, we thank you that when we face these complications, whether in business, we know that there's a God in heaven whom when we stand and remain trustworthy, he will be able to work a miracle in our lives. And therefore, God, keep doing something in our lives. Relieve us out of the complication. The same way you relieve Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Let us always see your victory in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for being with us this morning. Mm -hmm.